Now, since rewatching part two or part one of this video series, I decided I would just keep the audio on and then try to adjust my voice level accordingly to be louder than the game volume so you can actually hear me because I talk soft sometimes. Or I'll be away from the mic and you can't hear anything. And I have to basically yell and just get up close. So I'll just adjust the volume voice accordingly. Now the second part is something that you would not have seen. Do you, if you remember that old Destiny video where in the beginning area he came out of a tube, this big boss that two players, it took two players to take him down. He's in this area. It's a boss fight before you actually get to the tower. And these first two videos are just going to be like the only video where I'm actually just talking over me playing consistently like for a, any mission. Except for maybe uh, Crucible matches or the strike mission. But other than that, it's just going to be clips instead of just full gameplay start to finish. All right, let me see if I can get us out of here. It's been here a while. Hasn't made a jump in centuries. We're lucky the Fallen haven't completely picked it clean. Will it fly? I can make it work. Okay, it's not going to break orbit, it just might get us to the city. Now, about that trans man. Bringing you in. You can come back for them when you're ready. Let's get you home. Okay, there's two things you saw there. You saw the boss that's in the area, you don't actually get to fight him. I kind of tricked you. You don't get to fight him yet, actually. It's in the next story mission. And here is the activity rewards, and basically you're after, like after every story mission, or after every crucible match, you get, or strike, you get this nice little screen for your advancement, see what you leveled up, your mission summary, basically everybody in your fire team, all their stats, and your activity awards for that strike crucible mission. So like if you get any uh, items, weapons, armor, anything, it will show up in the activity awards screen. Welcome to the last safe city on Earth, the only place the Traveler can still protect. It took centuries to build. Now, we're counting every day it stands. And this tower is where the Guardians live.
Now, sometimes, or when after you're done the first mission, it takes a while for you to get into the tower because you see the loading time is pretty long. That's because it's trying to match you up in a lobby where there's actually players. Because sometimes you get into the lot, uh, the tower, which is basically the city that we're going to go to right now, is empty, and you're the only one there, and nobody joins. So like you're by yourself. So they're making sure you're the first the first time you get to the tower, you know that there's going to be people there. That's a nice move for Bungie to make it like a social experience. Continuing on with this infinite black screen right here, you may have noticed on the bottom of my screen, it will show up like Grimoire card found, and then it will refer you to Bungie.net to learn more. Basically, you earn Grimoire cards by doing certain things like challenges, how many kills, using certain weapons, finding dead or deactivated ghosts, getting kills in the crucible. There's challenges for anything, but you cannot, as far as I know, in the beta, you cannot look at them. You don't know what to do, so you have to do everything. You have to figure out what to do to actually get your Grimoire cards or Grimoire score. And when you get cards, or like when you do certain things and you get a Grimoire card, it adds to your Grimoire score. Now here in the Postmaster, they obviously give you a welcome message and give you 500 Glimmer for just playing the beta, just to get you started. So like you can buy maybe one or two weapons or maybe get a cryptogram that you can decode to get a random weapon. Now the Postmaster, from what I've heard of, is supposed to pick up cryptograms that you have not picked up in a story mission. So for example, Excuse me. if you go through like a strike or any story mission and there's a bunch of cryptograms or items on the floor but you don't walk over them to pick them up, they will be delivered to the postmaster. Now in the beta, that has never happened to me. Not at all. It's a lie. We expect okay. great things of you. I don't know about anybody else, but for me, the postmaster did not give me anything as far as items goes. It only gave me things for like special events. The bungee thing, uh, I think there was one for the Iron Banner event, I'll talk about that later. And for doing public events, like if you go into explore mode and you just go around, there will be random events or random missions that will have like a timer like kill somebody or protect these extraction zones many things if you watched some of the old destiny videos killing the devil walker that's one of the events and certain events spawn in certain areas okay I'll talk about that in more detail later obviously I'm not talking about where I am or what I'm even doing on the screen Right now, I'm basically just looking through all the shops. And one thing, if you look at my name, you can see my emblem and my backplate and my level, which is the big number. If it's yellow, that means you have a super. You are, you're supercharged. And you can see that on other players, especially in the Crucible, so you know when to, you visually recognize that they might fuck you up, okay? That's one thing people don't notice and I don't know if you got to see it but under the two is like an emblem that's just like a stack of papers and then a bunch of numbers that is your grimoire score I don't know what the grimoire score does it's just a number maybe it does something as far as I know it doesn't do anything it's just like bragging rights you know now in the beta you can only use certain items. You cannot, there was a, I think there's the item color rarity goes white, green, blue, purple, then orange, right? You can only use up to green. You can't use blue items. The lowest blue item I've seen is level 10 and you can only get to level eight in the beta. And talking about the different stats on your armor, for instance, there's discipline strength and intelligence discipline 
is is basically used to reduce the cooldown of your grenade. Intelligence does the same thing for your super, and for strength, it's for your melee attack. Okay. And let me show you. If you go into your options menu while you're in the tower, you can see everybody in the tower. You can see their level. You can inspect them, see what they're geared up with, their emblems, their backplate, their grimoire score. You can see how many players are in the tower. You can see, and the max no max number of players that can be in the tower at once is 16. Okay. Now where I'm going right now is to the exclamation point, to the ship right, to basically fix up my ship if you're actually paying attention while I was talking over the last video or the beginning of this video, okay? The beginning of this video, I was talking over it. I actually got a ship and I needed to repair it. So this is what I'm doing now. Basically, I, I click a button, it repairs. She does it for me, it's like instant, super, futuristic, space magic. And here you get to see all the ships and the sparrows. Ships and sparrows are different. Sparrows are basically like your mount. It's what you can use to get around the area fast, if it will allow you. Some game, in some areas of the map, you can't even bring it out. Now here is the map. You can see everything that is in the tower. It gives you a clear representation but there's also ta places of the tower that are not accessible like for example during the Iron Banner event a new section of the tower was unlocked and it's like a whole new area like if you go up the stairs you see where like those bunch of banners are like above where I am if you go up the stairs and try to go up the other level that's where the Iron Banner event area was and I think they're gonna be two more expansions to the tower because there's one in the middle section for the Iron Banner event there's one we've seen I'll show you footage of that later and the other two areas where the shipwright is and where the speaker of the traveler the voice of the traveler okay you'll know about him after you do a story mission but it's like it's not like a spoiler or anything. So basically, my opinion, three sections of the tra three sections of the city will have three different expansions when the full game released and we'll get to see three new areas excluding the Iron Banner event if you play during that time. Going back to the ships, your ships are basically what you see during the loading screen, right? What you see when you're in orbit. Like for example, here you see what my ship is. This is the default ship, okay? And you can use your cursor to set destination. You can go to the tower, you can go to Earth or other planets to do strikes, story missions, and you can access this crucible There's from orbit. Okay? We were lucky to even find this ship. A guardian can't do much to protect the city with that one. But it needs a warp drive if we ever hope to fight beyond Earth. And that Cosmodrome is the only place I know where we might still find one. We survived the Fallen once. We can do it again. A Guardian ship was recently shot down here. If the Fallen haven't gotten to it, there might be parts we can salvage. Now this is going to be the end of part two. From here on out, I'm just going to be clipping clips together and not showing you full gameplay. Okay? Because I need to get through this so I could free up space on my computer, you know? Because these videos take up a lot of space. Especially if you're trying to record in good quality. So, peace. I'm out.